grate, where ghosts stir under the wallpaper and whisper their plea to a careless world. Are we a dirty word? I'm leading the protest down Prince's Street, wheelchair battalions spinning like clockwork at dazzled cameras in the sun. Trafalgar Square next, if they won't hear our cry. We exist. I'm riding the way for change. <laughs> These women gathered experience and wisdom against, against great odds and were more often than not excluded from participation. This year also marks the centenary of the end of the First World War. So I'd like to finish this evening by talking about the barrister and pacifist Crystal Macmillan. She was born and died in Edinburgh. She was a UK representative at and organiser of the Women's Peace Congress convened at The Hague in 1915. She was also one of the organisers of the International Committee of Women for Permanent Peace. The ICWPP had planned to meet in Paris at the same time as the official peace conference was being convened <coughs> at Versailles in 1919. But women delegates from central powers, that's the enemy powers, and they were part of this inclusive women's um, organisation, were not permitted to travel in France. So the ICWPP met in Zurich, just as the Treaty of Versailles was published. Shocked by the terms of the treaty, the women drew up a resolution and sent a telegram to members of the peace conference in Paris. And this is the telegram that they sent to the men who were the victors who were drawing up the Treaty of Versailles, who had drawn it up. This International Congress of Women expresses its deep regret that the terms of peace proposed at Versailles should so seriously violate the principles upon which alone a just and lasting peace can be secured and which the democracies of the world had come to accept. By guaranteeing the fruits of the secret treaties to the conquerors, the terms of peace tacitly sanction secret diplomacy, deny the principles of self-determination, recognise the rights of the victors to spoils of war and create all over Europe discords and animosities which can only lead to future wars. The women of the ICWPP were not only excluded from playing what could have been an effective part in determining the course of history, their advice and warnings were ignored at the world's peril. We can't afford not to hear from those representing half the human race. And I'm going to finish with my poem for Crystal Macmillan. She was known as the Scottish Portia. Apparently she was a brilliant speaker. I never played Portia. Um, part I would have liked to have played. So I was thinking about the quality of mercy is not strained, it droppeth as the gentle rain from heaven upon the place beneath that is twice blessed. Um, when I wrote this poem, justice, persons and peace. The meaning of justice is our refrain. If half of humankind is erased from its scales, the word can hold no weight. Its essence ever bears a twofold freight. Those who make our loaded laws say only persons can participate in shaping the governance of state. By common concord, the lords maintain a person is de facto male. Thus they relegate half the value of yet another word to the same obliterated fate. And what of the single syllable, peace, that renders those who make it blessed, so strong, yet misconstrued as weak, violated at Versailles by vengeful victors who deny its power to release the world from future war? The one word women called for 
in Congress, at The Hague, that syllable whose meaning must not drop so slow it won't be felt or sought. Hear this. In the name and face of justice, we are persons, half the human race, and will advance our urgent plea for peace. We will persist. Thank you very much. So there you have it, Thomas Muir Lecture 2018. A big thank you to Phantom Power who recorded the event, but as he did last year, let me reproduce it here in the podcast. I should have another one out very soon, possibly not tomorrow, but definitely in the next few days. I'll speak to you next time, and I'll leave you with this. Have a good weekend. Shit.